Last Sunday in my message, I mentioned that we all need to stock up on as much joy and celebration as we can these days. I hope that our opening segment, Fun with Flags, brought you some joy and laughter. It certainly cracked our family up while we were doing it. And if you're wondering to yourself, what the heck was that? Google Big Bang Theory, Fun with Flags. This week I had someone bring some joy into my life. I got a package in the mail, which in these social distancing days is excitement enough. And inside the package was a gift and a very thoughtful card. Thanking me for my leadership during these difficult days, as many of you have done. And here is the gift. It is a lovely charm of a donkey, intended to be a reminder of this day and this season. Now, you might not be able to see it very well, but it is quite a bit more festive than the one that carried Jesus into Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday. But as the gift giver said, this one adds a little bit more fun. When we think of this day, we often think of palms. But the donkey really is an even better image for what this day is all about. If you noticed in Matthew's telling of the story, there's a lot of attention given to the donkey. Matthew tells us that everything gets going when Jesus sends a couple of his disciples to get a donkey with her colt tethered to her. Now, it seems strange that Jesus would be so specific, but none of these things were an accident. Each of them were symbolic, designed to show what kind of king Jesus would be. By entering Jerusalem in this way, Jesus was showing that he was God's chosen one, the Messiah King, the one they had been waiting for. And he was hearkening back to the promise of this one in the prophets. But the donkey was also a signal that he was going to be a different kind of king. Now, even in Jesus's day, a donkey was not a cool ride. Jesus did come as God's king, but he was not riding a great war horse. He came with no weapons or armies, only with words of truth and justice. He came to save, but he did not take up a sword and send the Romans packing. Instead, he had supper with his friends. He prayed, he cried in a garden, and he was arrested. He faced betrayal and mockery and death. And even from the cross, he offered forgiveness to the ones who had put him there. Jesus came as one who was vulnerable. And instead of wearing fancy king robes, he clothed himself in compassion and forgiveness and peace. Jesus was not looking for power like other kings and leaders had before him. He was looking to serve. As Jesus' followers today, Paul says, we are to have this same mind in us that was in Christ Jesus, the mind of a servant. To follow Jesus is not going to give us wealth or fame or popularity or power in this world. The way of Christ is the way of the donkey king, and it is not a way upwards. It is a way downwards into the suffering of this world. And when we are serving others, when we are lifting others up, we are most like him. Now, nobody really knows what those two disciples were thinking on that first Palm Sunday. But I am pretty confident that they imagined for themselves a grander and nobler role on that day than being on donkey detail. They had wanted to follow their Lord and be a part of his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And instead, they find themselves mucking about in a stable, trying to corral a donkey and her colt. But let's let the donkey be a reminder to us 
a reminder that following Jesus is often like this. It's not flashy or glamorous. And sometimes it may even involve mucking about in things that are messy and hard. God is in the details and always has been. Following Jesus involves everyday small things. Sending a card, making a phone call, making dinner, dropping off clothes and toiletries at the Sullivan Arena, generously supporting an agency that we know is providing care that we never could, being patient with our spouses or our coworkers or our kids, and a hundred other ordinary ways that we can share care and love each day. Just as with those first disciples and their task of donkey fetching, so too are we called to do the mundane tasks in our lives for those around us. Because that's what love does. Love serves. Now this week is going to be hard and weird, no doubt about it. It will be a holy week and Easter like none of us have ever had before. And there will be some sadness and disappointment and grief in that. And friends, it is okay to miss all of the celebrations that we would usually have and to name what we miss. But even in the midst of this unusual time, let us not miss the opportunity to follow Jesus. In these days when many of us are not having to put on our regular work clothes, let us not forget to put on our servant clothes. Let us not forget to clothe ourselves in compassion and forgiveness and peace. Jesus came in humility, riding on a donkey, in holy weakness, in a power that transforms the world by loving it. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and blessed are we when we follow in his servant way. Thanks be to God. Amen.